Hello, everyone, and welcome to BobaCast. I don't have a catchphrase this week, so you'll just have to deal with it. Something about uh, the only podcast with balls or something like that. Uh, balls of steel. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I can't. I don't know if I can steal that from Duke Nukem, but yeah. that sounds like a plan. <laughs> welcome to BobaCast. We are drinking uh, boba tonight, as usual. I don't drink too much, because if I drink too much boba, i got to clear my throat for the whole time. And What are you drinking, my friend? Just regular boba tea. Uh, you, you, you don't, I, I like, like it, so I'll just say with regular boba tea. I have the, the green tea tonight. The, the same, uh, if you're watching the YouTube video, uh, the same uh, green tea that's in the banner uh, this week. And uh, So what's up, man? What did you? Uh, what are some highlights of your week? Besides turning 39? Uh, yeah, it was your birthday yesterday. Wednesday. This work was kind of interesting, so it felt different. Was busy. Why does it, how does it feel different? I don't know. It's one of those things where you think this today is just you feel different, more active, more I don't know, uh, motivated or something. It's just one of those days you wake up, ooh, I'm tired, but all of a sudden go to go to work. I'm like, ooh, I'm all over the place. I'm jumping, you know. So sometimes you sometimes you hit a second wind. I usually call that. Maybe you're hitting a maybe you maybe you like your job this time. Well, I like both job. I like, I like, the other job is fine. It's just a lot of internal drama. So, Internal drama is hard. I worry about my uh, uh, co-workers in, the, in that old company because things are changing. They're at risk to losing their jobs, company, and all this stuff. So I'm just worried about them. That's just me. I just worry about things. Well, the, the last company you worked for was like a reverse mortgage company. So, so I'm sure that that type of job changes a lot. Uh, it, is, is it still uh, is it still growing? Like when the you company, left, the, the company is growing, but the, I'm and since I'm a tech guy, I was in the IT department. You know, that was a small team, and it got smaller. So, you know, I, I think it's a hey, we're gonna we're spending more money, we're getting more sales, which is good, but we're gonna shrink the other departments. So it's like this makes sense. How are you gonna support everyone? It makes it more difficult and. Yeah, they had an issue recently with uh, some video game companies. Would uh, they 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 told everybody that they were posting record profits, more money than they've ever made in their whole company's, you know, whole company's lifetime, and then they're like, "Oh, by the way, we're laying off eight hundred people," because <laughs> it's kind of like, "Wait, th- those two don't add up," you know. That just happened too with uh, when didn't Disney officially complete the acquisition of um, was a Fox or something like that. And like a, like a day or two later, they laid off like all the executives or a bunch of the executives, the, or something. Or uh, I forgot what it was, but yeah. You, you see any movies? Anything? I have not seen any movies. You gotta go see that. You gotta see that End Game, man. I can't talk about it because I know. <laughs> uh, well, my week was interesting. I I had that first world problem this week, which was um, I I could I could totally see like a, a Twitter post that says. I couldn't find any video games to play, so I had to watch anime instead. Hashtag first world problems. And that this week was my my big issue with I was just like really I was just kinda of bored. I was going, like, Well what do I do? I, I don't have I don't have any, any games to play or anything. And and I, I started watching this anime back in twenty twelve because my story is that I stopped watching anime in two thousand nine and then I picked it back up in like twenty sixteen when One Punch Man came out. Or One Punch Man I think was out already, but I watched it in twenty sixteen. Um, this anime I'm watching now is called uh, Mirai Niki, which translates to Future Diary. It's essentially, um, it's, it, it's notorious because there is a character in it named um, Yuno Gasai, who is a, a lady who has, you know, high school girl, pink hair, and she's a murderer, and she's, in, and she's a psychopath, and she's totally insane. And the whole anime is that everyone has a phone that can kind of see into the future. And everybody uses, so the phone might say, you get shot in the head in 10 minutes. And so if you can kill the guy who, and, and, and evade that, what your phone says, then you, it'll say happy end or it'll, you know, but the whole, it's all these people who can see into the future kind of playing each other in this battle royale thing where they all got to kill each other. And, and the main care and this girl's obsessed with the main character. And, and she's like, I'm going to marry you one day. And it's, he's like, at first he's like, this woman's crazy and he's like well you know she is kind of cute and uh so it's it it's really crazy there's a, a million characters and things and there's a guy who like 
can be, can beat can like predict what the phones are gonna do and like they go crazy with it like like anime tends to do but um that's known for the crazy girl in that in that show but i finally after sitting around i realized that i had a video game that was sitting there on hold this week for a while um and that video game is called the legend of heroes trails of cold steel and it is part one well, it's part one of this arc of games. There's four games in this this section of the overall story, which I guess there were like like six other games or three other games in the past, and then this new series started. I picked it up there, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I'm playing this game, and it's a it's a role playing game, lots of great characters. It's kind of like watching an anime in a way because the it's it's still about eighty percent cutscenes and dialogue, and then a the rest of the game is like, oh, there's a battle system. There's some strategy, turn-based battles that are fun, and that's the other half of it. But it's, but I was 27 hours in, and I stopped, and then I came back to it this week, and I've I've clocked another about five hours or so so far, and it's fun. But you have to, if you don't like to read, mm-hmm. you're not gonna like it because it's just constant like it's character development. It's huge world building. Some of the, uh, it's by a group a company called Nihon Falcom. Falcom makes these games have amazing world building back when I was 13, I played one of their games and just fell in love with all the characters because they really fleshed them out so well. So it's a good game. I look forward to playing more of it for those. Um, my, my work has been really boring. Uh, you said your work was, uh, kind of just, you were kind of energized one day and I, I haven't had really an energizing day at work for a while. So it's just, when I first started working there, it was like kind of like the dream job. Okay. I get to do all this cool stuff with video and now my job's kind of like, well, now they have me doing more kind of like data entry and server stuff and other things that are a little less exciting. But I, uh, but it's nice because then I get to do fun things like this podcast. And um, since I have a time off on Friday in the afternoon to work on the podcast, it's nice to, to start something and do some creative things because that's where I, I like to do creative stuff. So. Yeah, so I got into those really weird, you know, really weird animes and video games. And we're going to get into our first segment called This Week in Stupid. Um, And it's pretty simple. Those of you who have been watching on the internet or probably on TV as well, uh, they dropped a trailer for the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. And it's a live-action abortion, (laughs) pretty much. Um it's it's just it's the disconnect you know it's you're like the fans are like oh they're making a sonic movie and it's like it's like no one working on the movie has ever actually played or invested any time in sonic you know they 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 checked out maybe they played the game as a kid and they totally forgot they didn't you know but the character it doesn't even look like sonic there's this screenshot where sonic is is freaking out the guy's pointing a gun at him or something and he's freaking out, and he, he has those, he has like a human fa- human teeth, and the eyes are like really yeah. small, and and it just it just looks horrible. It looks like a, a guy in a yeah I know. costume, right? Yeah, it looks look it looks like it. But my, but my question is, why are they using freaking uh, what's his name as Doctor Robotnik? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. I was like, uh, it, he does fit it, but Jim Carrey is thin. Doctor Robotnik is. Fat. It's fat. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. They can put Jim Carrey in a fat suit. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't know. I didn't think he was funny in the trailer. I just. It's just. Uh, I mean, people say that Jim Carrey is going to carry the movie because it is so awful. Well, he could carry on doing that, though. What? He, he could carry on doing that if he wants to. <laughs> carry on. Yeah. Jim Carrey, though, he is weird. Like first, he was doing sculptures and and like. I think I found Jesus, and then like he's the and the next thing he's like, we need to, we need to to invest in socialism. We're like, what are you talking about? So he's kind of lost his mind. Um, well, he's been out of movies for a while, though, hasn't hasn't he? Uh, little things here and there, probably, but yeah, it's it seems like he's been gone a while this time. Yeah, you know, but this trailer and is just is awful and. And and Sonic Sonic looks really scary. In fact, um, one a YouTuber had a a video titled "The Sonic Trailer Needs Jesus Too." <laughs> so, um, but uh, man, just it just 
I watched the trailer and some people are really mad, of course, and they've taken to the internet in storm and just, yeah. how have you ruined my childhood? Cause Sonic fans are nuts. If you haven't been on the internet lately and checked out the Sonic fan art, there's even on the top, speaking of Jesus, there is Christian Sonic fan art, which is even weirder. Like, why would you, I don't know that, that I saw some images one time. I went, really? Um, uh, but, uh, but Sonic itself is just, uh, it's, Sonic the game series has had, you had the first few games that were good, and then you had games that really sucked, and then you had more games that's, that were kind of good or sucked, and then, and it's like Sonic 2006 was awful, and then like Sonic Forces was okay, because I actually played it, and if, you know, so they're, they've been hit and miss for years, so it makes sense that the movie would be hit and miss also. Um, but there is good news in this even though we're talking about stupid things, um, the outrage for the trailer and Sonic's design mostly has been so bad that, that Paramount and especially the director of the movie sent a tweet and said, we've heard you and we're going to fix it. Which, if he, if he doesn't choose to ignore us and actually follow through on it, and, you know, because I can, I can imagine the director might actually want to do that, but then you're going to have all the producers like we spent all this millions of dollars on you, you, you saw the trailer. There's a lot of Sonic running around in that trailer. So it makes you wonder if, you know, they're going to lose money if they redesign all that. I would think. And, you know, pro he's probably going to have some producers on his butt now. You, know, you're not, you can't spend our money that way. And hopefully we can. You know, I hope that Sonic looks like Sonic because people have photoshopped like what it should look like and it looks pretty good like it has the potential to look very good but anyway that's that's this weekend stupid but we're gonna talk about this weekend awesome as well and um oh, okay what is beer beer is good beer is good that's right we are uh talking about a band called psycho stick i don't know who got their start back i don't know 2008 2011 i don't know with an album called we couldn't think of a title and that album has a song in it called beer Simple lyrics. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stuff. And then they just yell and scream about how much they love beer. And I found that. And so they're a metal group that does comedy at the same time. In fact, they call themselves a hardcore band or they call themselves humor core, um, which is quite fun. Uh, and I, I've been I had a boring job in, in 2011 working at a uh, insurance company. And Psycho Stick really got me through a lot of just really, really bad days and long days. I'd sit in the car and listen to their music and, and hysterically laugh. They've, they've written a song about everything. They wrote a song uh, yelling at people and telling them they were an orange all the way to a song about sandwiches. Uh, they also had a beer song, and then they wrote a song about beards. In addition, <laughs> so you have all these crazy songs, and their new album came out. It's called Do. And they have a song that they just go, do, 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 yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> and they, yeah. that's it. That's the only lyric, you know? Um, but they have a thing called a uh, psycho stick, the tube, which is, you know, we're all familiar with loot crate, various other loot box groups. And they had a tube, a psycho stick, the tube, and they've done several, this is their fifth one. Um, I remember the original intro was just psycho stick, the tube. Uh, like they're rocking out. And so I got my tube in earlier today and it's, they had, they had a battle of tubes this time. They had, um, the original tube, which is just a standard poster tube and has space for, uh, psycho stick merchandise in it. And the other one's called the future tube, which I ordered, which is like one of those triangular tubes that kind of opens up. Like and a Toblerone. Just like a Toblerone. Exactly. Um, I'm not going to go into that. There's an anime series of a giant Tobler <laughs> oh, right. in it. I'm not going to go into that. But okay. um, um, I got, I'm showing you, for those of you listening, I'm showing Nathan these items. Uh, Psycho Stick Socks, because they have that song, I'm a dog and I like socks. I like socks. I'm a dog. Um, so there's a, they have socks. Yep. They have a, I actually got a bumper sticker. Beer is good and stuff. Yeah, and nice. it's yellow. I got two t-shirts. This one is, um, T-shirt, uh, Psycho Stick, the Future Tube. T-shirt, Tomorrow's Tube, Today. And then the people who ordered the the real tube got a different T-shirt. 
and then you get an, an assortment of random stuff. And uh, my random shirt is an image. You can see that it is a, a it's, sandwich. It's breakfast, and they have a song: "Bacon, egg, and cheese on toast with sriracha." Is the oh yeah the song? <laughs> so there's you see that there's the toast, the cheese, and then the the eggs and the bacon form a uh, skull and crossbones. And then it has the uh, sriracha says spells out psycho stick. It's kind of like blood or something. It's pretty cool. And I got a poster. Well, I got two or three posters actually, but this poster is uh, so you this right here. It is a. Uh, it has the crocodiles. It has a UFO shooting crocodiles out of it, and the crocodiles are shooting uh, heat-seeking killer bees. Um. Uh, out of their mouth, and so. Uh, and it's from it's from their song, you know. What if you could build a spaceship with a cannon that shoots crocodiles and everyone you hate? <laughs> what if those crocodiles could shoot heat-seeking killer bees, ensuring that there would be no escape? <laughs> and I hope I don't. I hope I don't. I've been singing some of these songs. I hope I don't get hit with copyright for some of these songs, because that's how bad it's getting these days. With the copyright is actually, you know, if someone sings a song and puts their own their own cover, and it's triggering the song. I got some swag in in, uh, in January for CES. I actually have socks, a pair of socks. I had the CES logo embroidered on it. And you go to CES every year, right? Yes, every year. What is what? what what's your favorite thing there? Uh, well, it's not really anything favorite. It, there is so much technology there that you see all the new a lot of new stuff that's premiered, that's not out in the market yet. Like this year's was that. Um, LG uh, rollable TV, 65 inches OLED. Mm -hmm. So that was their um, dr a lot of drones. A lot of companies are doing drones. They were doing ones with the self level, so you can't really push it down. Or it'll just re-level itself and kind of hard to crash. Um, Saw, so, what was it? Uh, 219 inches, the wall. It's not a practical wall. TV, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a TV, but how... Does anyone have a house big enough to fit 219 inches? So it's not a product. It's pro it is a product. I'm not sure if it's released or what, but that was interesting. So, well, we don't have we don't have a window. We don't see the outside. We just see a, this giant screen. Next thing you know, if you know windows at all on, on houses, it'll just be a screen with the camera outside, and, and that's not. It's a virtual reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's been uh, it's been cool getting Psycho Six stuff. The I used to forget. The tube is only sold one day a year. It only it's only available for like in for one day a year, usually on April Fools. Uh -huh. And it took them a whole month to get it to me, but I, I appreciate it. I, I like the t shirts. Last time they sent me some t shirts I didn't like or I couldn't wear and mm -hmm. I got a bunch all the merchandise I got was well worth it and I can do something with it and have fun with it. So that's great. Um so I think we're gonna go into our this this week in geek segment. Um okay. and this week we're gonna talk about Peter Mayhew. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Peter Mayhew. He's the actor known for portraying Chewbacca in the original Star Wars trilogy, as well as Revenge of the Sith and The Force Awakens. Now he didn't do he didn't do any of the Chewbacca noises. He just he was in the suit doing the stuff with the you know, with the weapons and and yeah. you know and fighting and punching and all that all that theat uh, uh, physical theatrical stuff. Um he was 74 years old and died in his home in Texas uh, on Tuesday. He was 74, died of a heart attack, um, which is always sad. You know, our, our condolences and, and prayers to the family, of course. Um, he was um, seven foot three inches tall, and he had um, he had a form of uh, gigantism, which caused him to, to grow so so large. Um, I'm also reminded of. Uh, Andre the Giant, you know, he had that. I think it was called acromegaly or something. It's a well, he, he was a, he was taller than seven foot, wasn't he? Under, under the Giant, he probably was. Andre the Giant, I don't know, but he was big too, I, really big. Uh, but he, but, I remember him in the Happy Gilmore and a bunch of other movies. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't Under the Giant Happy Gilmore. That was somebody else. That's someone but, else. Well, that was. The guy's like, I'm afraid that's Mister Gilmore's. You know that guy? Hey. Hey shooter! I think you forgot your clubs. He bends the club right there, but it's so it's, the the voice is so deep. Yeah, that that guy was funny. There's a lot of big tall guys in Hollywood. The the movie uh, Troy, at the beginning when Brad, Brad Pitt fights this guy, comes out and this guy's like seven foot tall, and Brad Pitt who plays Achilles in the movie just runs past him, and just one sword strike takes down this seven foot tall dude, kind of like very David and Goliath, you know. 
but um he was working uh he was uh he was born in london on may 19th 1944 um, he was in his 30s and working as an orderly in the London hospital when a film producer spotted him and he was ultimately cast to play the Minotaur, which is a towering bronze figure in the 1977 movie Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Hmm. Okay. Eye of the Tiger. Oh, I can't sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing it the song since then I get nailed for copyright because of YouTube. Or maybe I'm just scared of getting nailed for copyright and no one, no one wants to hear me sing anyway. Um but he was recommended to George Lucas, and he got in the Wookie Wookie costume. There's another actor I don't know his name who plays who's always in like the Predator suit, the Predator movies. He's over seven feet tall. He's been doing it for a long time as well. It's funny how talking about a tall person has us remember other tall people. Um, and he had the he eventually got the greatest job ever, which is Chewbacca consultant. Consultant. That that's my joke because he would other people who wore the suit he would like show them how to do it, and so he would they would. So he's behind uh, backstage basically during production. Yeah, or or giving them tips on like, hey, when you do this, it's it's he he now has the best practices. You know, here's how you do Chewbacca because I originated it. Uh-huh. I'm sure there's some Star Wars fans listening. They're like, I know that. Move on with it. Uh-huh. Um, Star Wars fans are pretty crazy, and I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a Star Wars noob, really. I mean, I've seen all the movies, but I'm not. But he's he's uh, survived by his wife Angie, and they have a foundation um, that has helped people get uh, tr- uh, organ transplants and other life saving stuff. And they're doing a really good job. I really found that out when I was researching this. It's pretty good. So yeah, we're gonna gonna miss that guy playing Chewbacca, although. I and mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm sure there are things that he does where if you know his acting, you'll be able to see like no one else would do it that way. Or, And I, I think it's cool. Uh, I think he, there's some story where he used to walk around with his, he used to walk around with a cane, but the cane looks like a lightsaber. Of course uh, it, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course it would, right? Um, yeah, I mean, cause since it happened yesterday, I've been seeing a lot of things on Facebook, people doing fan art, you know. So, uh, the one I saw was a picture of uh, Leia and Chewbacca walking in the distance, kind of kind of thing. I saw that. Yeah, because yeah. the, you know both passed away. Like, oh, there's another one that's kind of interesting. Is like um, you see uh, Princess Leia. It's a it's a drawing, fan fan drawing, and you see uh, Chewbacca in front of the pearly gates, and and uh, Princess Leia is giving like a medal or something like that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like you're making that's pretty cool. awesome. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> They're playing that music. He's going to get his medal. Because wasn't that the deal where he didn't get a medal in the first one? I probably yeah, that's right. There's they no... didn't give him a medal in the first movie or something. Well, yeah, he'll he'll be missed. That's that's uh, yeah. With people, uh, these different actors get older, we're losing a lot of them. Speaking speaking of that, there was um a post on my Facebook feed. Uh, it says uh, I forget what the title was. It was a picture of Gene Wilder, and it says and there was the what the other guy the actor that he partnered with. It says um. Show me, show us uh, anyone that's better than Gene Wilder as an actor, right? And all, it, all I did, you know, I, I posted a response that says, "Even though Gene Wilder is epic, Walter Matthau, Jack Lemmon, <laughs> grumpy old men, grumpy old men." <laughs> yeah, I remember that movie. It's been a long time, and I don't remember it precisely. All right, so um, our next, our next thing is just kind of something fun. I want to mention uh, the Postal Service is celebrating the 50th anniversary of. Well, we all are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Sesame Street. And they are making new stamps to commemorate it, which is hilarious because that means that, that um, Sesame Street was going on before I was born and continues to go on uh, through my lifetime. And uh, that's just crazy. They're going to feature photographs of 16 Muppets, including Big Bird, Ernie, Bert, Cookie Monster, uh, The Count, Oscar the Grouch, uh, you know, all your favorites, Snuffle Up, I guess, Elmo, Grover. Um, I, can, I can picture it now. One stamp, uh, 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 you know. Yeah, but then everyone's going to be a grouch when they label it and they stamp their envelopes and they mail, mail bills in. Ah, oh, I'm that. Well, it's a forever <laughs> stamp, so they won't be that grouchy. It'll <laughs> last forever. They don't have to worry about the price going up. Yeah. And they, if they want to send like a, um, a UPS envelope, the big giant the middle of envelopes, a big, is, is the stamp very big of Big Bird? Just kidding. I don't know. But yeah, is it 
It takes that. That would be how awesome would that be though? A letter where you got to send uh, more posters than you know, and if the whole, all the students. and like three big birds, three stamps like from top to bottom, and they make and they make big bird, you know. Yeah. Gosh, that'd be fun. <laughs> but I don't think they're that creative. They're like, but I thought that was a fun little uh, information, and they make stamps of just about everything. So yeah, I, I've made stamps before too. Um, I remember I lost my brother, and I think uh, the year after, for a Christmas gift from my parents, I actually went online and printed up stamps with actual stamps with a picture of my brother and my sister-in-law. Oh, oh you, so you can do custom stamps? Yeah, Zazzle.com. That, that was this is oh Zazzle, yeah. Yeah, it was like 2012 when I did that. I think they're not they're kind of a keepsake one, not one not to use at all, even though they actually have value. But so there's probably some uh, bootleg uh, Sesame Street stamps. <laughs> Out there. Oh gosh! Uh, but uh, we're going to talk about the Avengers. Uh, just n- no, no spoilers. Just on the fact that it made three hundred and fifty million domestic, three fifty three opening just, opening just weekend. This week, just oh, this whole week, not this week, last week, and just the opening weekend from like I guess Thursday through uh, through Sunday, um, it made three hundred fifty million domestically and one point two billion worldwide. Thanks to China, probably. Um, I looked at some other movies that were high-grossing movies. Isn't Titanic one of them? Yeah, but see, the Avengers has a chance to actually beat Titanic and Avatar now because this week, this week, Avengers hit 1.7 billion, and it only has to get another billion dollars to to match Avatar because Avatar is currently at 2.7 billion. Yeah, uh, between Avatar and those the and the, and the Avengers. And the Titanic, which is a long. It's all over three hours, aren't they? Pretty much, right? Yeah, they're all over three hour movies. Isn't that interesting how the long... Yeah. And even... Well, we're going to get into more of this, but um, Avatar is $2.7 billion, Titanic, $2.1 billion. The Force Awakens and Infinity War are pretty much almost tied at $2 billion with a, a few... Maybe about $30 million between them. I wonder when the cutoff is. I wonder if, like, maybe it's after the home video, when the home videos start, or when it leaves theaters. I'm not sure what the cutoff is for that. Home videos? That's the 90s. It's probably digital downloads now. Yeah, digital downloads. <laughs> yeah, see, see, I'm old. Sorry. Same here. Um, VHS, beta tapes, back in the day. Don't you remember Be Kind, Rewind? Be Kind, Rewind. <laughs> and Blockbuster Video, which Psycho Stick wrote a song about. Uh, be, and turning in your late, your late videos to Blockbuster Video in 1994. Um, but what's funny is they... They adjust if you adjust for inflation, like where all the prices are even, where you've adjusted for the inflation based on 2017 inflation. Number one is still Gone with the Wind at 3.7 billion. That wow. and that movie came out in 1939. Wow. Where will I go? What will I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You know, <laughs> and that was apparently that was the big cuss word back in the day, but. I tried watching it. I, I can't get through Gone with the Wind. It's just my attention span does not allow allow me to finish that movie. I open my browser to look up something, and there's a picture I say to Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. I posted on Facebook. <laughs> oh, you posted that. <laughs> yeah, I posted the picture. Oh, awesome. Then. Yeah, Gone with the Wind would be first if they adjusted it for inflation, and then it, then it would be Avatar and Titanic and Star Wars. Anything else you'd like to add before we move on to our final story this evening? Uh, one thing, a second. Yeah, I was actually since we were talking about all how much money, like, okay, I wonder what how much airplane got back in the day. Airplane. Uh, Gonna look it up. 80, 83 million. O- only eighty three. Yeah, domestic eighty three. Eighty three But uh, but airplane is awesome. I know. So come on, you know Leslie Niels and his best and Kareem, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Roger. Roger, Victor, Victor, Roger, 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 Roger. <laughs> and then they had the sequel where they had a, they had a, a this is Captain, Captain Under, Captain Over, Captain Done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was over. What, what was the, you know, the hierarchy? I was over Under, and I, and he yeah, was over over-under. Done, <laughs> was over Under. That was funny. Um, I, I, I miss. I guess we can go on a little tangent. I miss those parody films like Airplane. I really miss them because. People would they watch other movies, they look at the culture, and they make a movie that just nailed the jokes. And nowadays, they, they just don't. They a lot of the people who who make the people who made those parodies, like uh, some of the more recent parodies, not, not like scary movie, but like uh, there was a series of movies, the later scary movies, sort of, and uh, 
and uh, like remember the Spartans or those kind of movies. And they didn't even watch the original movie; they just used some of the iconography. And yeah, but remember back back in the you know back then, movie Hollywood could get away with a lot of stuff. And like think of it this way: like you know Star Wars, right? Okay, Spaceballs is a parody of Star Wars kind of thing. And they and and he based in the was it um, uh, Mel Brooks pushed the limit of what he could do on parodies because anything Mel Brooks is funny, and like we're still waiting right now for the Spaceballs two, the shirt for more money. <laughs> Has not been produced That's yet. Been rumors <laughs> of it, yeah. <laughs> the Lord has granted us these fifteen crash ten <laughs> ten commandments. <laughs> Just, it's. They're, they're always, yeah, they're always real, real funny. And, and, of course, there's some movies like, you know, talk about pushing the edge with, like, Blazing Saddles where you oh, can't, that really you can't is repeat edge. any of it because it's that all the edge. Yes. terms. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, Mel, Mel Brooks, uh, I don't How old is he now? Do we know? Uh, we can look it up. I think he's in his 90s. Yeah, he better he better have his, his son or something <laughs> work on this parody. So that's a, that's a funny thing about Hollywood is, like, you have all these cool actors, and guess what? Betty White is, and Kurt Douglas are outliving anyone in Hollywood. Kurt Douglas, them alive. Kurt Douglas is 102 this year. Although Kurt Douglas probably can't even talk anymore. He's he, probably, he probably could, but he's in a wheelchair, but he, he's 102 years old, and Betty White is, what, 98 now, 97? Yeah, Betty White. But Betty White has uh, hippos. Oh. She owns a pair of hippos or something ridiculous, like these outlandish animals that she owns. Okay, but speaking, I think we're going to close with this. Uh, speaking of celebrities, um, Patton Oswalt, mm-hmm. who was a very funny comedian, his he has a little daughter, ten years old now, that really loves My Little Pony, and he was in an episode a long time ago where he played a My Little Pony character. Uh-huh. And Patton Oswalt, uh, this is the ninth and final season of My Little Pony. They have said, mm-hmm. and uh, Patton Oswalt is going to return as that character character's name is uh, quibble pants that means john delancey's still going to be in it right the last thing uh i well john delancey plays discord yeah. the character of discord and that's kind of there but in this episode it's, it's Patton oswalt and he will be starring in this episode with his daughter oh, okay. and his uh his his current wife um his his last his his last wife mm-hmm. uh tragically died in 2016 and I remember Patton Oswalt posted this this kind of like his mourning process, like like he wrote it down, and I just I I almost cried. It was just so full of emptiness and and pain, and and this guy it really does suffer from a lot, uh, you know, obviously from that loss. But the episode revolve the episode of My Little Pony revolves around. Uh, I I don't I'm not going to spoil the episode because USA Today is already spoiling like what the episode is, but um. It's basically an episode about acceptance, about uh, about you know inviting new people into your life and accepting what happened and those kind of things and and one of the reasons I got into My Little Pony is because it, it had a while a long time ago because it had the, these these nice moral lessons in the in the show and it was it was kind of a little bit of purity in a world that is just wow you know his last wife was Michelle McNamara and she died in 2016 but they said that a lot of the stuff in the episode. It's kind of almost like a way for him to kind of finish the mourning process in a way. Uh, the episode is really just, you know, and having his daughter and talking about how she she accepts him and accept, you know, I just I think it's a, a nice message to have, and a way to also a way to deal with deal with the pain and turn it into something that other people a message that other people can benefit from. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to tune in for that. And there's a 200th episode supposed to be really good as well. So I don't know if they're one and the same or whatever, but. It'd be interesting to look into that. There's a new uh, TV series coming out, and Patton Oswalt is a, uh, I guess, an imaginary friend for a uh, former police officer or something like that. It kind of looks, like, it's kind of very funny. I saw the first preview for that, uh, I think, a month or two ago. It's pretty funny, and like, can't find it right now, but um, something to to look to to look into later. Uh, next week we may have a special guest. Uh, we're planning to have that, so uh, stay tuned for next week where we talk more about cool stuff in geek culture and. Uh, and this is going on the YouTube channel, so feel free to post in the comments stuff you'd like us to talk about, issues you want to hear about. Um, we're pretty much open to just about anything. But uh, I appreciate everybody who listens to this and uh, shares it. 
likes and subscribes to the channel. And uh, we are glad that you are listening and enjoying this. And uh, and so this is uh, Dan Teach with Man Productions signing off along with Nathan. And yep. uh, this is Boba Cast for this week. And we hope to see you next week. Thanks a lot for listening. And we'll see you all later.